Hello and welcome to Islanders Anxiety from Lighthouse Hockey and the Fans First Sports Network. My name is Dan Saracini. Joining me on this Sunday afternoon by Zencaster is my friend Michael Leboff. And Mike, um, this was not a good week for the Islanders. Uh, they won a game in overtime from an unlikely goal scorer against a hated rival, which is always fun. But that uh, momentary joy was buttressed by a couple more losses and a bunch of wins from people and teams around the Islanders. And uh, it has made for a very depressing week and the realization that uh, we are most likely not looking at a playoff team. Uh, Where are you at right now after this uh, one and two week uh, from the Islanders? Yeah, I'm uh, pretty despondent and uh, bitter, (laughs) confused, uh, I guess, are the three adjectives I would use. Uh, The worst The worst part about this season is it looks likely that it's heading towards a waste of time. Yeah. Right. Like, and and (laughs) when you think of that, when you think of that term, like waste of time, you think of, I just waited online at like a store and they were sold out of what I needed or waited for a restaurant and Mm. couldn't get in. And, but in this case, it's a waste of time where we went through these insane emotional roller coaster moments with this team not just on the ice in the games which have all been their own little emotional roller coasters but off the ice too with the uh coaching change the the vitriol towards the former coach before the coaching change (laughs) all sorts of you know crazy stuff that's happened uh to this team and to have sit sat through all of that for it to end in the way it looks like it's going to end is just a monumental waste of time and it and it really makes you question you know the the theme of the season really has been like why are we why are we doing this to ourselves um the uh the games yeah they're they're crazy and fun when they win but when they lose it's and when they lose two two huge games in a week after they give you perhaps the most satisfying win of the season Mm -hmm. because of the um fallout in pittsburgh afterwards Maybe that's going a little too far to call it the most satisfying win, but at least a a, a win that you thought they could build off of. Yeah. And then they they go and fall flat in two very winnable games, uh, two must win win game must win winnable games. Um, it really just makes you think like this is a waste of time. Like it really was, uh, and that is the worst place to be. Um, I think in in terms of like a season, because seasons are long. I'm, yeah. I mean, we're, we're 55 games into this, 56, whatever we are, 57. Uh, and we still have more than a quarter to go. So yeah. uh, to think that we just wasted all that time and all that effort and emotional kind of energy to, to end up here is um, it's pretty, pretty depressing uh, way to, to watch a, a, a hockey team. Yeah. Well, and the the reason that's a perfect way to put it, too, because like the reason it feels like a waste of time is like because season the seasons are long and there are each season has sort of its own flavor. Like there are seasons in which you are your team is a, is a cup contender or at least likes to think they're a contender. They're in a playoff spot. They're in the hunt. They're looking to get into the playoffs, make some noise there. We've been through seasons like that. Other teams have seen seasons like that, you know, like the Bruins or Panthers are in a season like that where what they do in the regular season isn't really as as important as what they're going to do in the playoffs. They're contenders. They could possibly win the cup. Then you have surprise seasons like the Flyers or Canucks where you didn't think you were going to be that good. And it's a crazy roller coaster, but it's you're winning like it's fun. And this is what it's all about. And you're having a good time for the first time in, in years. But then you have like the sort of rebuilding season where it's like we're not very good. We don't think we're very good, but you're looking for these sort of little incremental achievements, things here and there. Obviously the Blackhawks come to mind. Everything this season is about one guy. And as long as Connor Bedard is, you know, standing on his two feet at the end of the season and has a good season, that's all that really matters. Like everything else is, you know, I know their fans, it sucks to watch them lose games, but you know, there's, they're far from being at a point where those wins and losses really matter. The Islanders and and by a lot of, by extension a lot of other teams are in this sort of very strange ground where they are not good enough to compete in the regular season. We're going to talk about those games in a second that you said were winnable and they just didn't win them. But then it's like 
even if they were to say make up the seven points that they are out now at the final wild card spot, what do you think is going to happen in the playoffs? Like, where are we even going? The, team, the roster is on the older side. They don't have a ton of like young guys that are you know we're looking for improvement on or or development of. It's guys that have been here for a long, long time who frankly should know better. They should know what a team is, you know, when they're the, a game is a must win and they can't throw away points and they really got to get started and come out and really establish themselves. We haven't seen that. And so the feeling of a waste of time is really a perfect way to put it. And it's just, it's one of those seasons where what are we doing here? Like what, 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 where are we going? You know, we're not developing anything. We're not contending for anything. So what is the point of all of this? And again, I, you know, not for nothing, the Islanders are not the only team in this boat. You know, the Penguins are very much in this boat right now. You know, the Devils thought they were going to be good and the wheels have fallen off. They might not make the playoffs either. God only knows what the Senators and Sabres are doing right now. Like no, they were supposed to make that leap and they haven't. So um, there's a lot of teams in this, this place, but this place sucks. Like I don't right. want to be here where there's, we're not making any progress towards something else, whether a mm-hmm. cup or, you know, a, a cup five years from now, it's not happening. Yeah. And I think, uh, what's happening in like on our peripherals too is is making it even worse which is that the rangers oh my god you know they haven't lost in a month and the rangers and leafs are never going to lose again yeah i'm convinced of this (laughs) like that's definitely adding to the despair right um and and i think i think a lot of fans make uh a much bigger deal about like the islanders lack of uh prospects and future assets then it really matters because i think that they still have you know guys in their prime that they could easily you know the islanders are good enough to to win to make the playoffs in 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 the regular season and they're good enough to to bounce back next year they have the the right pieces in place all that stuff um but what is frustrating is that they've and and a huge part of this waste of time and, and i don't mean to pick on them at all but um I think that Oliver Wallstrom is like a really good example for, for just how much of a, a waste of time the season has been mm. because we just went through, uh, you know, the, the, what has it been three weeks since the all-star break? And this was supposed to be the Oliver Wallstrom opportunity that he right. <laughs> quote unquote never got before. Like this is the, this is the one now we're at 31. He's played 31 games this season mm. and he's got six points. <laughs> He's got six points. He's got two goals. He's got yeah. two goals this season. He's played 31 games. Hmm. And why I'm saying it's a waste of time is because we knew this. Like we yeah. we said back in you know beginning of December when he was started to be scratched. Like uh, I think he was basically sat out almost all of December in in favor of Julian Gauthier. Hmm. And we said, yeah, that makes sense. Like the guy, we've given this guy every opportunity. Caught a bad break with a bad injury last year, but even you know before that, wasn't setting the world on fire. He's now at right. 67 points in 192 uh, games played. He's he's just not there. And and the, why I think he's a good um, kind of symbol of this waste wasted time is that you could have given an opportunity to somebody else. And it didn't have to be him or Julian Gauthier or or Hudson Fashing. It could have been somebody else. It could have. Mm. They could have waived him. They could have got creative by you know trading him for maybe somebody else who's in a similar predicament uh, on a different team. There were opportunities to to uh, kind of move move on from him, and they never did. They gave him every chance you could imagine, and he just hasn't responded. And you feel like, well, like what did that accomplish? Like yeah. what what did keeping him in the lineup for ten straight games accomplish other than show us? Yeah, this guy's probably not going to work out with the New York Islanders. <laughs> which, by the way, we knew. Yeah. Like, like it, it, people get on on Lou Lamarillo for doubling down, and in this situation, I would agree. Like, yeah. this was a double down in a situation where you didn't need to double down because we already doubled down on this guy. Like, we didn't need to go through this whole thing if they thought that waving Gautier took some would take some pressure off Wallstrom and like let him play freer. Okay, I, I can see that line of thinking, and guess what? It didn't work, and now we're seeing him scratched again. Where he's the extra skater at practice today, and I think that this is kind of where this entire season is is ending up. Like, mm. it's what what did it accomplish? What what is anything in this season accomplishing? Uh, yeah. You know, Noah Dobson has a great year. Great, like he's been awesome. It's been mm. rest assur- like reassuring to see that he has a 
you know, almost Norris Trophy ceiling. In, sure. in like he could be a Norris Trophy winner by the end of his career. That's great. But what we didn't do anything with that season. Matt, Bar- yeah. we've, right. we thought, okay, can Matt Barzell work with with Bo Horvat? Yep, he can. Yeah. But guess what? What's <laughs> that? What did that work? What did yeah. that like it accomplish? Because it it nothing. Like the answer is really nothing because they spent they wasted a lot of time and other parts of the the roster that just weren't working and you know before i I flip it back to you like the other kind of microcosm for the season that really showed up this this week was yesterday against the lightning um you know matt the islanders are down to nothing they they come out flat and we'll get into that uh, Mm -hmm. because it's unacceptable but they come out flat go into the locker room come out put together like three or four good shifts and what happens to kill that momentum and give the Lightning a 3 nothing lead is Matt Martin takes a boarding penalty on his first shift of yeah. the second period. And you're like, this is, this is, this, right. this player, like, you don't, you don't look at the uh, Carolina Hurricanes and look at Jordan Martinook and be like, that guy's costing them points. Like their, their 12th forward or 13th forward is, is costing them, actually costing them, actively costing them points. Matt Martin is costing the Islanders points, which is, insane for a player who who barely played in the game he Mm. he crushed the islanders yesterday in like six minutes whatever he played he crushed (laughs) them and he crushed the islanders in in that game in nashville and Mm. it stinks and i and i got a a dm from uh he goes by mike pelfrey's soup on on twitter saying like the we were we we spent so much time so concerned about saying goodbye to these guys and how sad it would be to like watch cal clutterbuck or Casey Zizekas or Matt Martin or Josh Bailey or whoever playing in a different uniform. And now, now we're looking at the, this other kind of universe where we're like starting to get mad and be like, God, I just need this guy off my team, which is the last thing we ever wanted with Mm. these guys who are, you know, franchise icons for this generation. It's, it's, and it's all their fault. Like it's not, it's (laughs) it's no one else's fault, but theirs. Well, that, that is the, you have just touched on the, the dark Knight paradigm. You either right. die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Like instead of Batman and Two Face, this is Matt Martin and Cal Clutterbuck and Casey Sezik. It's like, oh, by the way, uh, you are 100% right on Martin yesterday, but uh, for the record, he played four minutes and 30 seconds. Amazing. <laughs> and Amazing. Uh, yeah, but, but, that, but that gets to the point you're making too about the waste of time. Like we love these, these three guys, right? They have, they have fought and bled and, and played a huge role in this team over the last however you know five years whatever it is whatever you know the era you want to call it and even before barry trotz came in they were one of the highlights of the team what purpose does it serve playing these three guys in a season in which they can't win two games in a row they cannot make up any ground on any of the teams in front of them in the playoff chase they do not look like a stanley cup contender again they don't look like a developmental kind of situation so what what is the purpose of giving them all of this rope when like wh- who are we playing these guys for like are we trying to trade them like and that's what i was going to say with wallstrom like if if this whole you know giving him this rope was in like kind of showcase him and show other teams hey listen you know this guy is a pretty good player maybe you want to trade him that has not worked out either because if i was a gm of another team i wouldn't want this guy yeah <laughs> I mean, i'm sending scouts and they're not seeing him do anything big waste of time <laughs> yeah and and there's this and i get like the loyalty to these guys and absolutely absolutely and, like, and I understand why they're still here and all that. Right. But when you're in desperation mode right now, like the Islanders are, there's yeah. Matt Martin has spent good portions of his career sitting as a healthy scratch. Like the, his, this isn't a guy who, who was really used to playing 82 out of 82. He didn't, mm. he didn't do that until uh, Barry Trotz came along. Really? Like he was barely playing in Toronto before he came back. And even mm. before, uh, trots like it wasn't like Matt Martin was just like in his name was in permanent marker in the lineup. <laughs> it became a thing. It worked, and then it started to not work. And now it's like they're af- almost afraid of offending these guys. It, yeah. It's very strange because it 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 shouldn't matter when you're there's nobody on this planet who knows how disappointing he's been over the the this crucial stretch of season hmm. uh, from basically the Christmas break on. Then. Matt Martin, like he knows that, like he knows his job is to go out there, have nothing happen on the ice, really basically good or bad. And he's not doing that. And the fact that they haven't had a, found a way to finagle him out of the lineup is, is very head scratching because 
right. when they went on that run, he was hurt. Like it, <laughs> I hate saying, like it's not Matt Martin's fault that the Islanders no. were in this predicament, but well. they he was hurt, and uh, it was that the fourth line was like fashing in there with uh, Sezikis and Clutterbuck or wh- whoever, and um, they they went on this little bit of a run because they just weren't. They're not a a team that can overcome mental mm-hmm. mistakes from guys who aren't bringing anything to the to the table. It's right. one thing if Matt Barzell turns a puck over at his at, at the Islanders blue line, because Matt Barzell is going to go out there in his next shift and he's probably going to do have a chance to make up for it. Right. Like if Matt Martin takes a, a boarding penalty or Cal Clutterbuck turns a puck over in the neutral zone and then has to take a penalty against the Avalanche, like they're not going to find a way to be, make up for those mistakes. <laughs> so it's yeah. it's it must be frustrating to be and and they would never obviously admit it but like the guys who are going well like the dobsons and the barzells poor vets i i think about that a lot because barzell in particular is not a guy who seems shy about voicing his opinions and stuff and i can't imagine what he's telling these people who are his friends and who are his brothers who have played he's played with for a long time but you can't tell me that he's looking at these penalty killers and being like what the fuck are you guys doing out there (laughs) You know, like what is that? I just I just spent a minute and a half in the offensive zone, right? Changed, and you came on and took a high sticking penalty, and they scored on the power play. And like I'm, I got right. now, I got to go out there and do it again. Like yeah. this, Bo well, Bo Horvat takes a puck off the this yeah. bush and scores, and Anders Lee is offsides on it. Like yeah. I, I, these guys, it must be driving them insane because right. and, and Kyle Palmieri was weirdly the one who almost I don't think he meant it this way, but he alluded to it. He's like there are like four, it can't be four or five guys playing well like everybody has to be doing it and that's uh, that's correct like and and the fact that the guys that are not not playing well are not playing well in such small sample size and they're not playing their their level is so poor that it's even in those four minutes they're able to tank a game Mm. it's it's really tough to take and and yeah right now it's like i think the waste of time is uh is the right kind of way to label this whole thing because these guys yeah. it feels like they are wasting our time and they're wasting yeah. matt barzell's time and both time and, <laughs> and, no, and like no that's what's time. that yeah. you know that's what's and, crushing me and Ilya sorokin's time and Ilya sorokin's time the, right yeah like you know they alluded to this on the broadcast again yesterday that he's seeing more rubber and from more high danger spots than any other goalie in the league who doesn't play for the San Jose Sharks. Like it's kind of crazy. So uh we're gonna die also it, it needs to be said because I'm sure somebody's thinking this, you know Barzell has also taken his share of dumb penalties at the wrong time too. So he's right. not a hundred percent absolved here, but the point no, is he's not, but he's also he's, right. He's leading the team in scoring. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like he so. could, hey, he can go keep doing that. It's right. it'd be one thing if he was, you know, playing at like a half a point per game pace and, yeah. and taking those penalties or turning pucks over. But when he's playing as well as he can, like go right ahead. Don't care. <laughs> like, you, you go slash, go slash someone in the face and yeah. uh, you deserve it take out your frustration because I would <laughs> I that was the thing about that Martin tripping penalty the second penalty he took it was almost like he did it on purpose because he was just pissed and I'm like well, what was that right I was so mad about that yeah. I, I don't know I well I, this isn't a podcast about Matt Martin taking two penalties against the lightning but I, <laughs> I think they were so emblematic of where this yeah. team is at right well, now well and they're emblematic yes absolutely but they're emblematic specifically of the mental mistakes that this team is making, right. but let, let's go through every game. Uh, and we'll talk about this because this right now is a team that to me is, especially after that lightning game yesterday, looks absolutely spent both, both physically and mentally. And we'll get into the, because each of these games has evidence of that really before we dive into this, that was a long intro, but before we dive into this reminder that we are on Patreon, patreon.com slash Islanders anxiety, ad free episodes, bonus stuff, and a whole lot more sign up today. Uh, also, don't forget about our live event, March 30th at the beautiful brand new Offside Tavern in New York City. Everything kicks off at four o'clock, so be there. Bring your weird Islander swag because uh, we're going to be recording for a podcast. Okay, uh, let's go all the way back to Tuesday. Uh, obviously, this was the first game after the debacle at MetLife Stadium. It was a pretty tough couple of days. Uh, everybody's like, oh, what a great game that was. Outdoor games are back. And meanwhile, we're sitting there like, yeah, about that. Um, wasn't a lot of fun for us. <laughs> so uh, again, if you were at that game, uh, my condolences. Uh, it was really bad, but uh, we made it through. Perfect opponent in a way uh, in, in Pittsburgh. And for half the game, it looked great. They were up 3-1 uh, af- in the second period after Holmstrom scored. Uh, Nelson had a beautiful sort of dipsy doodle goal before that. Barzell scored. He was in the in the box, of course, for a dumb penalty. They kill it. He comes out. He scores. 
absolutely perfect play, and everything seems to be going great. They were even withstanding pressure in the early third period. Riley scores, makes it 4-2. Or excuse me, uh, Lars Eller had scored sort of late in the second. Uh, but, you know, 4-2, about halfway through the third. Things seemed to look fine. But then this team just fell apart, as they have done many times, as they did on Sunday. They score, they, they score twice, the Penguins do. Some guy named Valtteri Pulstenen has like four career points. Three of them are something against the Islanders. It's a little ridiculous. And then Drew O'Connor scores off of Anders Lee's skate, basically, into an open net. Uh, somehow they don't give up a goal at that point after that. But Adam Pellick, of all people, busts in over a change and just wires one home. I don't know where this kind of goal has been from Adam Pellick this entire time. Uh, I guess he waited for just the right time to use it. It was a fun moment in, you know, in the moment, it was a great experience watching them beat the Penguins in overtime again with an, with an unlikely goal scorer. But then you think about it and you're like, that was their 18th blown third period lead of the year. Uh, Sorokin was good, but he had absolutely no help. And a couple of those goals went into literal empty nets. Um, they outshot the Penguins, but they, the Penguins kind of controlled things for a better part of the end of the second and the third. Sezikis got hurt. He hurt his hand. Uh, he came back. Well, he got hurt. He came back. He hurt his hand. He left. <laughs> he missed the next game against St. Louis, which we'll talk about. So um, this was, you know, the two points were great, but they also gave up a point to a team that was, you know, right in the chase with them, although the Penguins have, are doing their part to kind of slow that down. So, again, momentary fun and, and smiles, but ultimately – uh really bittersweet i don't even know if that's even really the word like it's just it's more bitter to me than anything else uh what did you make of this one uh and like why are we still watching this team blow these leads when we know what they're gonna do like it's, I, I even said at the beginning after the second period should i turn this off now or watch them blow it and they blew it because yep. we all knew they were gonna blow it yeah what, what's crazy here is like they they all after that game you know they 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 go down early. They, they. I thought they responded really well. And I was like, okay, if they could yeah. just, if they could just play like this for the rest of the game, they're going to end up winning this game, in all probability. Like this, unless Nedeljkovic just is does what Jordan Bennington did to them a couple <laughs> nights later. But, um, they come out in that third period, and just decided almost, eh, let's mm-hmm. just get this thing to overtime, <laughs> right? Like it, it was. Yeah. It it looked like they were playing this weird passive style, o- almost reverted back to what we've seen from them all season. Um, you, you'd think they were playing the San Jose Sharks again with the way that they, they came out in that third period. And uh, then they score what is the clinical definition of a back-breaking goal. Yeah. Like the Penguins owning the Islanders all throughout the first 10 minutes of that third period. They just can't get one by Sorokin. Islanders are bending but not breaking. They get one rush and they score on it from Mike Riley. Right. A goal that he'd probably want your goalie to save. Uh the, the crowd turns on them. People start leaving. 4-2, must win game for you. You just blew a, a third period lead uh Sunday night in on Yager night to the Kings and lost in regulation and it's happening again. Like right. this is the if you couldn't find me a more perfect back breaking goal, if you tried on this entire season mm. and the Islanders, that still wasn't good enough for them. Like you, you yeah. just scored a goal that took the wind out of a team's sails completely. And you just, it wasn't good enough. Like that is, that's, what's crazy about this. It's not, I know that they w- ended up winning the game, but because of what happened after the games, like I've got nothing but good. I've got really like no good memories of this game anymore. <laughs> and the Islanders won, you know, or taken like three out of the next four points against uh, St. Louis and, and Tampa, be, you know, this is a signature win, something that springboarded them. Now I'm like, this is just a blip and it should have. And it's, and it's more of a, uh, it was like another symptom of this crazy rotting mental fortitude that this team has that they blew a lead to, a team that they could have buried in the playoff race, at least for the time being, a rival, a team that beat them seven nothing on their home ice mm. not too long ago. And instead they let them walk right back in and tie the game, get it to overtime, and it luckily ends up with the Islanders winning. And after the game, they all said the same thing. And Matt Barzell said it yeah. um bluntly, was like, We gotta figure this out. Like we have yeah. to figure it out. And you can tell how frustrated they all are. And Pellick was said something similar about 
out. They have to figure out these blown leads and the PK, and they have to find a way to string some results together because time is running out. Yeah. And <laughs> running then, out. Come on. Yeah, running. Out. Well, that's the thing. That's what's been <laughs> that's been driving yeah. me driving me insane about these. Mm. Uh, you know the way that they've looked at some of these loss and 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 like the whole waste of time kind of theme here is like what do you mean running out like right th- this isn't this isn't game 28 this is <laughs> you don't have that much runway left no mm. we we've all sat through these these games and watched them like you got to go you got to go mm. now and uh and they don't obviously and and i'm thinking about like the next day i woke up and pe- pe- people were piling on the penguins and yeah. talking about how like that's it they're done they're trading Jake Gensel and the season's over for them. They got to Kyle Dubas has to figure out, he has to unleash his plan. Mm. He has to scrap his, his one Renaissance painting and begin a, a new. <laughs> Apparently a new... both their goalies are available now, including yep. Tristan Jari, who genius Kyle Dubas signed to a five year extension last summer. Yep. And nobody's saying this. Like, why did we sign Tristan Jari to this contract? And are They're now trying making to him trade available? Ryan Graves' contract. Like, they, right. they might just trade Jake Gensel with Ryan Graves as like a here. We'll <laughs> give you Jake Gensel if you also mm-hmm. take this contract that Kyle Dubas signed. But nobody's nobody's talking about that right. one. Uh, We're all trying to find the guy who did this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, that, that next day it was so enjoyable. It was like I'm mm. I'm thinking about myself that next uh, morning, like. Oh man, the Islanders are they're still in it. They they win it the biggest game of the season. They they respond to that absolute clusterfuck against the Rangers with a win at least. Maybe like this was finally the the team is finally going to go on their first run of the season basically. Mm. And they just don't like they I I was so one of the one of the worst parts about the season was I was so sure that they were going to win that game in St. Louis, mm. and I don't know if I've been more off with my uh, my Islander good feeling radar than this season. Where I'm like, I got a good feeling about this game because mm. every time I have a good feeling about a game, they lose. But every time, like, I had a terrible feeling about the Tampa game, mm. because, mostly because it was like a matinee and they were wearing of their, their pilgrim jerseys. <laughs> but I had a terrible feeling, and, and whenever I have a terrible feeling about a game, they also lose. So it's like. No matter how I feel about a game, it feels like the Islanders are just they're just gonna lose. And that that loss to St. Louis was yeah. such a a slap in the face, I feel like, to yeah. everybody. Yeah. And and I and I we'll get into it. So yeah. but I know what people think about how they played that game, but to me it was like, come on. Yeah. Um well, no, but I mean that's a perfect segue because hot on the heels of that on un- uh be- feel bad win, another feel bad win uh in Pittsburgh. <laughs> You know, they go into this game against the Blues, who, again, you know, have had an up and down season. Sometimes they're in the playoffs, sometimes they're not. This isn't the team that won the cup a couple of years ago. Jordan Bennington is just as likely to melt down during a game as he is to shut you out. And I thought they had a I had a good feeling about this game, too. Uh, and the first period, it was pretty even. Both teams actually killed two penalties and, and you know, things were looking pretty good. Uh, but then they decided to the Islanders did decided to melt down early in the second period in a span of 32 seconds, which as by now you all know is a record for both the blues to score the fastest three goals in team history and the Islanders to give up the fastest three goals in, in team history. And it all started with a Kyle Palmieri penalty. The blues score three times. You know, they score on that. They score on the immediate face off following that, which I saw happening because I can see the, the red seas part and some, somebody, uh, I guess it was Buchnevich. That was the one that he just like wired home uh, past Varlamov. Not a great uh, goal. And then right, you know, 30 seconds later, Buchnevich scores again. I think I was a tip in that time. It doesn't matter. But like within a span of 30 seconds, the game was over. And at no point in, and this was early in the second period. So they had well over 30 minutes of game time to come back and claw back into this game. At any point, had they come back right after that and scored a goal, made it 3-1. And you'd be like, well, four goals in two minutes. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Then it would have been different. But at no point in the next 30 plus minutes of play did they ever even almost come close to doing anything. (laughs) Like they scored, they had 20 shots on goal in that second period. And I don't think a single one of them was really all that dangerous. Um, They ended up pulling Varlamov with 11 minutes to go, a signature move by Patrick Waugh going back to his coaching days in the Avalanche. Uh, But of course, 
it doesn't go their way. Dobson has a chance. It rings off the post and Buchnevich comes back and he scores an empty net goal and a hat trick. And it was like, just again, in the, again, one, in the blink of an eye, the game was all, all, but it was just over. It was yeah. done. And I mean, frankly, they, again, it was over before that, but like you thought, okay, they have 11 minutes. If they can get this game tied, which for some teams is not that hard to do, then they're, they can, you know, maybe pull something out in overtime, but at no point were they ever even almost looking like they were going to do anything. Biddington was ex- excellent. For, give him credit. He made 38 saves. Some of them really spectacular, but uh, all the underlying numbers in the world aren't going to help you if you can't score goals. And have you ever seen a team shoot wide, shoot high, shoot off target more than this team has this season, particularly in the last couple of weeks? Like, these guys, when even when they get good chances, we'll talk about them in the in the Tampa game. But like, they had a ton of good chances in that game, and they all went wide. What are we doing? Like, they're squeezing their sticks to the point of petrification. Like, there's nothing left in these sticks once they're done shooting them because they know that it's going to go wrong. Like, <laughs> this is just a confidence problem. We'll talk about Patrick Waugh's words in a minute. But like, this game, I, I'm with you. I had a good feeling going into this Blues game. I thought this was the exact kind of like weird, random game that they could win and set things right, but. Man, once those three goals were scored, I was like, they're done. This is done. There's no way they're going to come back in this game. And guess what? They didn't. They lost 4-0. So, yep. that's that. and Yeah, and for the, for the season to end, because uh, that's that's how I felt in the moment, for the season to end in St. Louis in, in a span of right. 32 seconds <laughs> is just right. poetic for this, the way the season's going. Like, if you could have found a spot on the calendar where you thought the Islanders, like, this is the point of no return. Mm. That being it is, it's quite, um, mm. it's quite bizarre. And that fits with this team. And it's, what's crazy is that this team, like during Barry Trotz, there's one image in my mind that, that sticks out to, to kind of sum up what this team is and, or was, and, and why we love them so much. And that was uh, against the Bruins in game five. And I talk about this all the time. Josh Bailey makes a mistake. Yes. The Bruins end up scoring on it and ESPN immediately or whoever had the, the television rights at the time, they they immediately flash to Bailey on the bench and he just has this look in his face like they shrugged the team already shrugged it off. Like they I was just thinking about this this morning. I'm glad you're really I'm really glad you're bringing this up. And it's it's a a perfect encapsulation of of why that team overachieved because here's a player who was derided for so long in his career for, for being soft and just not living up to expectations. And you would think that kind of player would have crumpled in that moment, but instead they didn't. And he ends up being phenomenal for not just the rest of that series, but you know, in, into the, to the lightning series too. Like that, that line was fantastic. Bo Villiers, Nelson and Bailey. And um, after the Islanders gave up that first goal to the, to the blues, I could have, stopped that game and went down the line and interviewed every Islanders player and been like, you know, are you guys going to come back in this game? And you know, whatever. And the, I think the general party line would be like, yeah, we, we've caught some bad breaks. Like if Palmieri's puck goes in, you know, this is a different game. Like, well, it's not, it didn't go in like this. It didn't go in. This is a, a game where you're down one, nothing and you need to win it. And then you need to mm-hmm. win the next game too, by the way, like you need to find a way back in this game. I don't care if Jordan Bennington is, stabbing people in the the chest or standing on his head like you you have to to win and instead they're like ah let's just sulk right <laughs> and they sulked for they sulked for another 30 seconds yeah and that was it like you, yeah. you can't it's such a I, i've watched so, so much senators hockey and sabers hockey mm. over the past decade and uh even like a team such as the Canucks before last year, like you watch these games and you pick them up and you can point to the exact moment where they just break in a game. Yeah. And people who look at um, almost just like are religiously into just numbers and, and don't want to get into any, like the intangible stuff won't hear it, but you can, you can see it. And I, I firmly believe like you can, you absolutely can because these are human beings playing the sport they're not just you know like little fake guys on a, on a uh, chart and you could point to moments where you're like this game's over like i don't care yeah. if it's they're up 2-1 i don't care if they're down one nothing in the first period like this team just they're done and the islanders when they gave up that first goal against the blues 
that's what it felt like because they were playing pretty well. I was almost like, man, like we deserve to be winning this game. Like that's not fair. Like, yeah, of course not. But like, doesn't matter. Like you, you need to win this game. Like you just have, like, there's no, it's so weird, man. It's so weird. I, one of the things I always would bring up, uh, talking to people who were like, man, the Leafs, the Leafs can, uh, are, they look great going into the playoffs and this stuff and they'll have Matthews line and they, they've got, uh, you know, whoever's in goal looks great. Like Samsonov's having a good season. Freddie Anderson's having a good season. All they like, all they do is talk about the Leafs and, mm. and like how they, they can win a series and they fail to mention, like you're playing another team. Like the other team has a say in the game. Yep. And, <laughs> and the Islanders are playing the season as if, they're the only like there's no other team there like the other yeah. team isn't allowed to to have good players or whatever it's like yeah. no they're they're there they're trying to win too like and they're just trying harder than you and if you and i hate i hate bringing it to that but it it does feel like it's just an, an effort thing from a team that was all piss and vinegar for mm. for four years and yeah. now they're just the whatever the opposite of that is like <laughs> apple juice i don't know what they yeah. are and this is a team that they are so and, and it's not all of them too that's the problem like it's like half of them uh, or less and if you're not all gonna buy in it's just a waste of time yeah it i would say it's been that way for at least three seasons going back to the the dreaded first ubs season that was destroyed by the road trip and the pandemic and all that stuff you know there were games where they didn't give a full effort and it, or at least it looked like it didn't, they didn't give it. And, but you could kind of be like, listen, this has been a rough one, especially towards the end. Like it just wasn't working out. You know, they were playing Chara again a lot and it was tough, uh, tough to watch. And so it was okay, fine. They come back the next season. It's under Lane Lambert. You think that there's going to be a renewed energy. And they took a large part of that season completely off. Remember January was a disaster. They, they, picked up Horvat just before the all-star break came back, played very well after getting him. And then, you know, their playoff series and then roll into the playoffs had some moments during the playoffs, but really they were, you know, they weren't ready. They weren't going to, you know, even had they made it out of that game six, I don't know if they would have beaten the hurricanes this year. They just look tired. They look tired physically, mentally. It just doesn't look like they're giving the, the amount of energy required to win the battles. I know this is all like cliche, old timey, coachy stuff, but like the lightning just took the puck from them. We're now we're onto the lightning game, but it happened against the blues too. Like they just took the game from them. They just took it and they never gave it back. And, and this is that exact way you described it has been going on for three years. Now the Islanders never seem to understand the other team wants to win the game. They're not afraid of you. Like they're just not. And maybe for those first three Trotsian seasons, they were either surprised probably in the first season and then they became sort of afraid. And they were the ones that had that sort of psychological advantage of like, these guys are going to come back. These guys aren't happy. They're, they're going to, they're not going to take this laying down. Now the Islanders, all they do is do is take stuff lying down. Like there's just, there's no fight back. There's nothing. In fact, less yesterday, somebody skated into Vasilevsky and, and the lightning were the ones who were all pissed off and the Islanders was kind of standing around. Like I was, it's, it's a stunning turnaround yep. for a team. Like you said, that was all about, scratching and clawing their way deep into the playoffs. And maybe you can't do that forever. And I understand that. But like you can it's a it's an attitude and a and a a, a mental sort of space to be in that they are just not in. And even today, as I just before we got on, I was watching Patrick Waugh's practice, you know, post post practice video. It's on the Islanders site. I'll link to it. He says it's a matter of confidence. And he's 100% right. But, like, this is a team that, you know, Barry Trotz used to say, stay in the fight. Keep in the fight. Don't let go of the fight. Jack Capuano used to call it swagger. Remember when he used to talk about having the swagger? And, I mean, how many times did they have that swagger under Jack? Like, it wasn't a lot. But sometimes they had it, you know? This team has lost it. They have absolutely lost it. They are willing bad things to happen. Uh, they know bad things are hap- going to happen. And they know that when they do happen, they're never going to get out of it. And, like, the game against the Lightning – is very much like the uh, the game against the uh, the Blues. Like all of a sudden, bang bang, the Islanders, the the Lightning have two goals in a minute and twenty two seconds in the in the first period, and that's it. And in between was like you said, a goal 
that they thought was scored off Bo Horvat's face ended up getting called back on because Anders Lee was, you know, three feet off sides. But like they never recovered from that. Never. Like they're just they they got a couple of goals in the third period that, that we talked about the Matt Martin penalty. Uh, somebody uh Kucherov just literally poked the puck through JG Pajot's legs right to Braden Point, who scored. I mean, Point almost had a hat trick. It would they would have given up back to back hat tricks to had Point scored another goal in that game. <laughs> I mean, he almost did. You know, I think he might have had a shot at an empty netter. So, like, you know, it wasn't – Sorokin was – was he let in one bad goal, but he made 19 saves. He barely had any work because they didn't do anything. Like, they just – they were hanging around the lightning net, and they just never really had a chance, or they didn't really look like they were going to tie that game or do anything. They were just so completely devastated that it was 2 nothing that they were just done. And I get that Patrick Waugh sees things, you know, he's like, well, we're making strides where the structure is there. The confidence is not there, but we're doing the good things. I get what he's saying. I, I, I know that he's only been here for a month. I don't want to lay any of this on his feet. I get it. But after watching this happen for three years now, it's very, very, very difficult for me to hear what he's saying and come away with any sort of confidence whatsoever. <laughs> and it's not his fault. I get it. But like, it's rough. It's rough because these guys just, they don't got it. They just don't have it. They, it was, yesterday's game was garbage for 50 minutes. That's what my note here is because then they, they scored a couple of garbage time goals later on. And for a minute it was three, two. And then Adam Glennanning gets an empty net goal. And that's it. Adam Glennanning. Once again, our segue to our favorite stat of the year. The Islanders still don't have an empty net goal. <laughs> Adam Glennanning has an empty net goal for the lightning. Probably more than does that, but the Islanders, nope. He, they have no empty net goals. So it's confidence. I get it. But man, like where's it going to come from? I don't understand. These guys have been playing together for 10 years. They don't have confidence in each other. I don't understand. Where is it going to come from? Who's going to bring it? I don't, like you said, it's not everybody. Some guys, I think, still like, obviously, Barzell is still playing with confidence. But who else? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, as uh, I, w- I was disappointed against the Blues because you felt that was right. a – you win that game, and then the Lightning game doesn't feel like life or death. Right. At the very least, like it, it's still a massive game, but uh, you, you're still in the fight. To, to 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 use your Trotsky and you know, mm. proverb there, but um, they they came out in that game like we knew they would. Yep, they came out in that game like they were on Islanders Twitter and like, yeah, it's a matinee. We're wearing our third jersey, so we're right. We're screwed. Yeah. Um, and the three minutes of chaos where the the Lightning score. The Islanders take a penalty, and I and I I thought that that was a little bit unlucky. That it, it, that was a penalty against Nikita Kucherov and probably like eight other players in the league that Pelik took, right. because they are just going to get that call. Like you need mm. to know that, and yeah. they as soon as he went to the box, you knew that the Islanders were going to pay for it because this is a team that is thirty second in the NHL yep. in 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 the league in penalty kill, and they're playing the best power play in the league. And I know that they didn't score on the technically scoring the power play, but that was a power play goal. Yep. And the entire, if the entire pregame meeting wasn't about, Hey, do not take penalties. I don't know, mm. you know, who, what it could have been about because that was the key to the game was look, yeah. the only way this team's going to beat us is if we give them opportunities to on the power play there. Yeah. That's it. And that's how the, the lightning won. Like they won because that penalty and then, and then Matt Martin's penalty uh, in, in the next period, like, the Islanders gifted them two goals. They get really gifted them three because the the, the second one, the one in between the, mm. the two power play goals or technically power play goals where um, what was just a salt, another salt goal where the Islanders mm. had, they gave up a goal. They responded, but you know, Anders Lee was offside and forgot mm. how to skate for a minute there. And uh, the, uh, they just felt bad for themselves for like 15 seconds. And it was enough. Like that's enough for, for Braden point. You think Braden Point is gonna not realize like, oh man, this team is right. they just took two punches into the into the gut in the first four <laughs> minutes of a matinee. Uh mm. and they're wearing those terrible jerseys and where here's our opportunity to just stomp on their throne. That's what the these teams that have won Stanley Cups and are yeah. good do. And right. they did that and that was it. And then the Islanders looked feeble for like the rest of that first period. It was terrible. They get booed off the ice in mm. the first, they get booed off the ice in the second, and there was a pushback, sure in the last six minutes, but that pushback came from Bo Horvat, Matt Barzell, Brock Nelson, Noah Dobson, and like Mike Riley. 
Yeah. <laughs> that's five players. Like this isn't yeah. this isn't a team sport where you can get by on that. Yeah. You're the Lightning can because they you you gave them you gave them the opportunity to. No right. teams are going to do most teams don't give you the those opportunities to to win games when you have three or four players going. I uh that I I I really don't have any words for that game because it was so disappointing. Mm. I hate hating this team and that that performance made me hate them like, it just made me so mad and the whole day i'm thinking it was first of all it's a, it's a matinee so you have the rest of the day to stew mm. and the whole day you're just thinking about how much of a waste of time this season was like i sat through you guys blowing a lead to the to the hurricanes and to the devils and to the the red wings and to the, to the sharks <laughs> right. and just a couple nights ago to the penguins like i've mm. sat through all this shit and you have an opportunity to make it at least a little bit worth it by scratching and clawing your way to some meaningful games in March. Mm. And that's really all we're asking now is right. like, can you give us a couple more games that matter? And mm. you couldn't even do that because you couldn't work hard enough for it. And then after the game, like, yeah, we're just, you know, we're going through it right now. Dude, you've yeah. been going through it for two months. I think they have seven wins since Christmas. Yeah. It's something awful. Like It's that. not. Yeah. This isn't like a, you know, a, four game losing streak like the Canucks just went through like they went through a little blip here mm. this is a 23 or 24 game sample where you yeah. guys have just been gleefully playing like shit like this yeah. is get get it together if, if yeah. and then like it's it always seems to happen that uh and I, and I don't blame people in ticket services for this at all because it's not their decision <laughs> but yeah it always seems that the islanders pick the exact worst time to start asking people to renew their their right. season tickets <laughs> and wouldn't you know this week you, everyone's yeah. getting their emails hey mm-hmm. you're part of the family like no i i'm tr- trying to leave this family i'm yeah i got my stick and bindle out i am <laughs> trying to find a a train and head west please right. get me to like a gold rush or something yeah. because this is this is terrible to watch and it's terrible yeah. and we talked about last last week about um like the suspended animation of watching mm-hmm. your team go ahead in a in, in a game and not even being able to to be excited because you know that they're going to mm-hmm. blow it which they did you know two games in a row before they they lost two in a row and uh now it's just it's joyless from the moment the puck drops at the moment because it's, yeah you, if they go behind, they're not going to come back. Like no. you, th- you think they're going to, they're probably going to give up another goal. The, the stat that Art Staple posted was insane about mm. how many go- game goal, how many games they've given up goals within a hundred seconds of each other. Mm. And why, why would I expect anything different against the stars? A very good team on Monday night. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. You think, okay, the Islanders might come out. They might have the, a good shift or two to start the game. Oh, wow. Look, they got some jam. Oh man. A, a, an unlucky break. And, Right, yeah. Alex Romanov breaks his stick, and the Islanders end up giving up a goal <laughs> on the shift. Like, oh no! Now right. I'm gonna watch them all skate back to their yeah. to the bench with their you know heads down, and mm-hmm. the next shift comes out, and they're gonna score again because that's how this team is going. Yeah. It's well, it's, it's the season's driving me nuts. It's depressing from the get go because how many times this year have we said this is a must win game or this is a crucial game? I mean, this week they played for a week you know, including the stadium series game, they played four must win, actually five. Let's throw in the Seattle game. Who cares? That was five must win games that they lost. <laughs> they won. Sorry. They won one in overtime and gave a point to one of the teams that that's in the chase with them. So like you just lost. A, and I, they also have to lead the league in, well, you know, they're down, but here's a power play. So if they get one here, this is a big, a moment for them. And they never do. They, their their power play, which was once actually pretty darn good, is like I think four for thirty five now or something like that in the last bunch. So every single time Butch or Brendan says, "Well, you got to get one here," that's a guarantee they're not going to get it because they just aren't. And again, it's it's a confidence issue. I get it, but like again, look at the Lightning. Like this is not the team that won back to back Stanley Cups. This isn't even a team that that lost in the Cup final in twenty fifteen to the Blackhawks. This is a a different team. Yes, they still have. Stamkos, Kucherov, and Hedman, and Vasilevsky, and Point. They have a bunch of really, really good players. But have you seen the bottom six? Who the hell is Mikey? What the hell was his name? Essamont? Who is this person? I don't mean they're like making guys up. Who yeah, are the these people? Line too, like the Calvin DeHaan, I feel like was playing right. twenty minutes last night. Who, 
Who is Nick Perbix? Nick Perbix is a real person. That's not like an EA Sports made up name. He's he's the guy who's but they come out with all the confidence in the world that they can win these games. And it shows. And they look like a team that is very confident, even if they're not where they want to be in the standings, even if they're not, their roster isn't what it used to be, you know, just a couple of years ago. They come out and they win games. And the, the Islanders right now, they're not winning games. And th- if we're going to talk about the next games coming up on the other side of the break in a second here, but like this is a team that I know management doesn't want to rebuild. I don't want to rebuild because I hate that term because it's just a free pass to suck for 10 years or more. And I just don't want to do it. But the reality is that this team needs probably half of an entire new roster. And even then, who knows what, what the attitude is going to be? Because to me, these guys, they're all signed long-term. They're all making a ton of dough. They're all very happy and content living on Long Island. Who wouldn't if you have that much money? And I'm getting the, the distinct impression that they do not care if they come to work, get booed for a couple of hours, and then just go home. Like that's, that's the impression I'm getting. And I get that, you know, oh, we had a great practice. These guys here really, they care a lot. I'm not seeing it. (laughs) I'm just, I frankly, I'm just not seeing it. So, you know, if they want us to think something else, they better change how they're playing. And even if they did, I think, I still think they're, this season is done. They don't miss the playoffs by like a point because it's too late. It's absolutely too late. Uh, Final thought before we, we head off into our break here. (laughs) Yeah. I think that, you know, I, I, I understand why people feel that way, especially in the moment. Like you're like, screw, screw it. Like trade yeah. everybody that's not Matt Barzell or Bo Horvat or Sorokin mm. and Dobson, whatever. But it's just not like, it's just not going to happen too. Like mm, you can't, right. this team is, is not, it's not like almost physically possible for them to do that. Cause mm. they have so many people signed to next contracts next year. Yeah. Like they're not going to be able to, to do anything, but, like you said, they'll have to shed some of the, you know, bottom of the roster, revamp that, hopefully get creative in, in other areas, but uh, they're not, like, it's just not going to happen. And, and there's, I hate that people get mad at other people for, for wanting w- the team to go one direction and, and not this direction. Like, mm. I, I, I don't care if I'm right or wrong about the Islanders. I just want them to win. Right. Like, I don't want to be someone who's like, I told you that, you know, Julian Gauthier was, was a top six winger and they should be like, I don't, uh, great. Like if he is, that's awesome. Great. And I hope he does well, but I, it's not the reason I watch sports isn't to be right about, right. you know, NHL players or what, how, what contracts to sign and whatever. And my, my feeling is just like, I, I'm, you, I can't get the Islanders to, to do anything. I'm not in that power. So I just kind of take it as it comes and, People who are like, oh, they got to get rid of Scott Mayfield. Like, okay, mm. you can feel that way, but it's just not going to happen. So you're just going to have to like almost live, learn to live with the fact that Scott Mayfield's going to be here for a long time, and mm. Pierre Engvall's going to be here for a long time, and in all likelihood, Anders Lee is going to be here for a few <laughs> more years, right? Like, mm. it's just how it's going to go, and and the the how this team can work around those and and turn those from problems into like just part of a a winning team is is what's going to decide how these next few years go but they have their guys locked up so yeah. that the i hate the rebuild talk too because it's just mm. not it's it's impossible for this team to rebuild it's just right. they they have Ilya Sorokin, Matt Barzell, Bo Horvat signed till 2030 mm. beyond that actually like the into like the mid 2030s like this is a <laughs> this isn't a team that's going to be able to do that so um and yeah, like you said, the season is in all likelihood is over. It feels that way. The only way, like this, this team went from being a team that can say, you could say like, they just got to win two out of every three. Hmm. Uh, you know, if they can do that for the rest of the season, they'll be in good shape to now. It's like, no, they got to win six out of seven and yeah, they got to win nine out of 10. They got to win six in a row. Like they, the only way the season survives is if they get to, they get to 95 points from 60 with 25 games left. So they have to get yeah. 35 points from 25 games, which is going to require them basically winning 17 or of the 25 or, or 16 of the 25 and, and getting some, some overtime losses. So yeah, yeah, like they can do it, but 
what on earth has shown you that they can? No. You know, like they, they have just not, I, I'm like, I've, I've said plenty of times, I won't give up on a season until like, it's either mathematically over or very, very close to it. And we're, we're getting very close to that, to that crossroads here for, for, for me. And uh, if they, they come out of this week with, uh, and I know we're going to talk about it on the, the other side of the break, but like they're at a point now where they can't afford to, to not win, you know, five in a row <laughs> coming up. So <laughs> it's, it's a shitty, shitty situation. Awful. And it's awful. what's going on in the rest of the league just makes it even oh worse. God. It's a waste of time. You had it's a right to that. <laughs> All right. We're going to break, take a break, take a breath, come back, talk about the next week. Uh, which uh, is also looking like it's not going to go very well, but you never know. But uh, some teams we, uh, at least one team we haven't seen in a while. So uh, let's uh, let's uh, take a break and come back on the other side. Thanks. And now a word from our sponsors. First is VintageIceHockey.com, where you can get t-shirts, hoodies, jerseys, mugs, and more featuring over 100 classic hockey logos. Vintage Ice Hockey also carries our Al Arbor and the Island merch, and our portion of the sales always go directly to the Center for Dementia Research. Use the code ANXIETY20 to save 20% off an order of two items. That is VintageIceHockey.com. Try wines from the Pinot Project. They offer a rosé, a Pinot Grigio, and a Pinot Noir that was named a 2022 Top 100 Best Buy by Wine Enthusiast Magazine. All are delicious, priced at less than $15 a bottle, and available at local wine shops and at UBS Arena. Learn more at thepinoproject.com. Please drink responsibly. The fine folks at FOCO have two new Islanders bobbleheads commemorating the Stadium Series game at MetLife Stadium. Order your Ilya Sorokin or Sparky bobblehead today at foco.com or click the link in the podcast description. These are limited to 124 pieces, so act now. That's foco, F-O-C-O dot com. Okay, so the Islanders have three games this week. Uh, Monday night, uh, it is they are in Dallas versus the Stars. So the day you're listening to this, that's an 8 p.m. start. Uh, then Thursday, they are in Detroit, which is a 7 p.m. start. And then on Saturday, they are home to the Boston Bruins at 7.30. And then they get a couple of nights off before they play again. Um, I can't see how they win any of these games. I just, I just can't. The stars are too good. They've been good all season. They've, you know, have a hiccup here or there. Uh, I just, that's a very, very good team that not enough people are talking about being a serious cup contender. The Red, Ring, the Red Wings right now are firing on all cylinders, trying to solidify their own playoff spot. A win against them would be huge for the Islanders, but I'm not buying it because one is trending up and the other is not. And then, oh boy, we're starting off March with the Bruins, <laughs> a team that loves to play the Islanders at home. Again, the situation only the Islanders can find themselves in here. Um, I mean, what wh- what is even the hope here? What like what is even what are we clinging to that makes us think in any way that the Islanders have a chance in any of these games? Like maybe Jake Ottinger hasn't been <laughs> quite as good as he's been in the last couple of years. He's been a little bit up and down. Like maybe that's your thing with the Stars. Maybe maybe Thursday is the day that uh, Alex Lyon finally turns back into a pumpkin for Detroit. Um, people are trying to convince me that the Bruins aren't one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference again. I'm not buying it. You can't be, you know, we've seen them set a record and then lose in the first round. Like, you know, I don't think they want to do that again. I think they're probably just sort of tempering themselves a little bit. Um, but maybe, you know, the Islanders can sneak something in there. I don't, I don't know. I just, to me, I'm not, I'm, I'm, this is, if you had a lineup last week and this week is like, okay, here are the teams that you're playing. Who do you think you can get the most wins against? I would have said this past week, Penguins, Blues, and Lightning. The Islanders could have beaten them against the stars, Red Wings and Bruins, this is by far the harder week. And, you know, the Islanders, like you said, anything, anything less than points out of all three of these is a waste of time. You get points in all three of these. Maybe you get lucky. Somebody loses and maybe you're up two points out of the playoffs. Okay, fine. But otherwise you're done. Season's done. And then the trade deadline is the week after we'll talk about yeah, that. Someday. Exactly. It's, it's, it's actually a, <laughs> a perfectly poised week for, for the Islanders because in a way, yeah, it, it kind of, it's either the nail in the coffin or if they, you know, f- find a way to win th- mm. three in a row, then beat the blues uh, on March 5th before the, the trade deadline um, game against the, the sharks or the night before the trade deadline. Like right. 
you can squint if you want and, and say, okay, I see a shred of silver lining here if they can mm. do it. But, you know, you, you said points in every game. I The Islanders need to win all three of these games this week, and they're going to be an underdog in all three of these games. Mm. So they're, um yeah, they're, they're in a lot of trouble, uh, if, yeah. if you didn't realize that already. And I I think that what you're you're essentially hoping for here is is kind of a um you know that a minor miracle that the islanders are somehow able to string three in a row together and the flyers or red wings or lightning or some you know two of these about four teams that are in and around them uh go over uh, yeah. because to be honest like if I'm watching the Red Wings go on this not just a four game winning streak right now, but uh in just in general, like they've played to a, a crazy p- points pace over uh something like a month now. Yeah. Uh Detroit has. And and the Islanders are and I I don't care if you disagree, in my opinion, the Islanders on paper are like a tier better than the Red Wings. Like they mm. the Red Wings are fifteen five and two in their last twenty two games. 15 5 and 2 like the Islanders are a better team than 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 Detroit. They Detroit mm. has Alex Lyon playing over his head right now. That's mm. why they're doing well. They've got a good power play and a, and a great goalie. The Islanders there's no excuse for the Islanders not to be able to go on a run like this. Yeah. And that's the only shred of hope I'm clinging to is like the Islanders and one of these teams can go on parallel runs. Uh but that's all well and good in my head. Then reality sets in, and you watch them play, and you're like, "Well, they're not going to, because they're going to lose to the Stars, and then they'll lose to the Red Wings." And what you know, they'll they'll geek themselves up that oh, it's another must win game. This is one of the teams we're chasing, but hmm. it, by that point, the the Red Wings I think could be 11 points ahead of the Islanders or something like they could be right. they could be 12 points ahead of the Islanders, so it won't even they won't even be in the same fucking universe. No. Um. So yeah, I mean, that's what you're you're hoping for is is that the Islanders just get incredibly lucky. Like they yeah. they get incredibly lucky and and all the scores <laughs> on the town because yeah like it, let's just say the Islanders do pull it off a miracle they go three and zero and the Red Wings only win you know one or two points of uh, from their games this week which they're playing the Blackhawks today um, mm. so I I don't think that's gonna happen they could be four points back by the next time we talk or two points back of of Tampa or the Flyers if they if they all go to shit while the Islanders win these three games in a row that they're not going to win, like then we can have that conversation again, but they played, they played at such a piss poor pathetic level that to even get to a place where we can start to, to have um, false hope is a three game winning streak away (laughs) against two of the best teams of in the league. And then another one that they're chasing. So um, it's such a sad state of affairs when, the you you can't even hope for false hope like that's the thing like you know you can't even be like just win a few and make me think that you're gonna win just so i can get disappointed again that that's off the table because it's just not gonna happen you know you're, you're like well what if they get lucky at what point in this season have they gotten lucky in any way shape right. or <laughs> games it's, seasons you know whatever it, so. there are there are so many different parts of the season that are gonna haunt me during the summer and mm. you know those those times when it's like mid August and you're like, I can't wait for hockey. Like we're not even at mm. training camp. Training camp is still a month away. It felt, and it mm. felt like it's felt like years since the, I've seen the Islanders again. And then I'm going to think to myself of Kyle Palmieri poking that puck behind Jordan Biddington. And it just, it almost looking like it saw the goal and decided to take a right turn on its own and be like, just think about how you felt in that exact moment. Be like, oh, do you still miss them? Be like, no, I'm done. I don't You don't talk about it. get lucky. Like the Islanders I, to, to watch, because I do like, I do think it's fair to say like they've caught the shitty end of the luck stick this yeah. season too. But For but sure. you have to earn it. Like you have to earn yeah. the right to be able to to blame bad luck. Like they don't mm. they don't have the right. They haven't earned the right to say yeah we're just getting unlucky. Mm. They have the right to say yeah we've we got unlucky and we're also playing like shit and we're playing yeah. pathetic hockey. <laughs> Team other teams that the the Tampa Bay Lightning could say hey we we've been unlucky at times this season because they're still going out there and trying harder than the teams yeah. that they're playing against. Yeah. Um. So and and to to watch the Islanders, you know, catch all this shitty luck, mm-hmm. uh, and then watch the 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 Rangers and other teams. And oh, I'll watch a game and be like, 
I've never seen the Islanders get that bounce. The Rangers nope. scored a goal against the the Rangers were up three one against the Blackhawks, and the third goal was scored while one Blackhawk was helping another Blackhawk off the ice because his <laughs> skate blade broke. So like they were pushing him off the ice, and the Rangers saw it and were like, "Holy shit!" Like there's nobody playing for them right now. They're all trying to help this guy. Yeah, and they scored, and that game went to overtime three three. So that ended up being the game the goal that got the Rangers to overtime. Yeah, and then they won in overtime against the Blackhawks in a game that they played like shit. And yeah. that's part of this this long winning streak. Like this winning streak should have ended against the Blackhawks, and it should have ended against the Islanders. Mm. But the Rangers are like a competent team. Like they yeah. they when they when you give them a chance to get back into a game, they do it. And the mm. Islanders don't. So that's the difference here. It's like it's right. I I don't want to watch any more hockey. I'm done. <laughs> I can't turn on other games and yeah. watch these these games and be like, why can't the Islanders do this anymore? Like why can't that happen to the Islanders? It's well, it's so depressing. I'm glad you brought this up because this was a topic that I wanted to talk about. By the way, before we get off the top of the of the Rangers, uh, I'm I'm done with Matt Rempe. Uh, it's been a week and I'm already done with this guy. I love how somebody comes into the league, fights a bunch of guys. Everybody's like, wow, isn't this great? He's like an old timey hockey guy. He fights. This is so wonderful. I, I'm going to have to unfollow Stan Fischler because he he said that like, you know, some that fight he had with that uh, uh, Delorier in uh, uh, Philly was like the best fight he'd seen since like 1959, 60 or something. Like, come on, give me a break, really? And what's going to happen is Matt Rempe's going to hurt somebody. He's going to get suspended. And people are going to be like, well, you know, you really can't play like that. And you know, he's, he's a dangerous player out there. And then he's going to get put on waivers. He's going to get traded. He's going to become like, you know, persona non grata. Uh, but this is sort of the life cycle of these goons. But, uh, he, you know, I'm already over like, isn't he the most wonderful player in the league? Because this is like what Tom Wilson got. Like, oh, isn't Tom Wilson so great? And then he started hurting people. I'm like, oh, you know what? He's kind of, that's not really good. You can't play like that. You really just got to stop that. So yeah, I'm, he, already, I'm he already hurt somebody. He already, yeah, he already, he, right not. I, he's, that's, that's the thing. He already got kicked out of a game. Like, I right. think it's it's so Rangers and, and the, the right. difference in how they're covered. Because if this was an Islander. Like oh, my God. This was Ross Johnston. Right. And he was making his debut. People like, oof. Man, people the Islanders still, are stuck in 1991, aren't they? Like, no, people like, still talk about Matt Martin like he's John Dillinger or Jack the Ripper. Right. Like, it's, Matt Martin hasn't been has never been suspended his entire career, despite being like what second or third in the NHL all time in hits. Like, yeah, <laughs> like just, so right. But in any event, but to get back to the point, I want to make because because you brought it up and, I, and I'm glad you did. Like, part of me gets mad because you're right; they don't make their own luck. And they get into these modes where they give up two goals or three goals in a short period of time and they can't fight their way back. A lot of that has to do with confidence. A lot of that has to do with, I guess, being old. I don't understand. But the thing was, like, we've talked about this team kind of living around the margins. They don't have an Artemi Panarin. They don't have, uh, you know, a guy who, forget about Austin Matthews, but like another guy who can like break the game open and score a goal when they need to. They don't have like a Jack Hughes or a Nico Heischer. Like they don't have these types or, you know, one of these other, again, not a David Pasternak, but like, a, you know, Brad Marchand or something like that that can, or David Krejci that can come in and, and break the game over. Matthew Kachuk, I'm naming like some all-time great players, but like they don't have that guy. But they managed to make it deep not long ago by winning by committee. And the thing is, what makes me mad is that they have tried to add that guy. They got, we, we were like, oh, you know what would be great for the Islanders? Kyle Palmieri. They went out and they got Kyle Palmieri. You know what would be great for the Islanders? J.G. Paggio. They went out and got J.G. Paggio. I was in my basement playing rock band when I got a text from you guys saying that they acquired Bo friggin' Horvat, who <laughs> was on a 40-goal pace. I was like, holy shit, they got Bo Horvat. That's perfect. That's the exact kind of guy they need to, to goose their offense and play with Barzell. They have tried to go out and get these guys, and with the exception of Horvat, these guys all just stop scoring goals. Like Palmieri has 15 goals right now. And I think his, his career high with the Islanders was 16. So he's like, you know, two goals from passing his career high with this team. Meanwhile, when he was with the devils, his first year there, he scored 30 goals. Second year, 26 goals, then 24, then 27, then 25. That's not our, our call. Palmieri is a different guy. And I get that people like him. He's been, he's been great in the playoffs. He's been good since Wa got here. A 25 goal Kyle Palmieri or a 30 goal Palmieri is a lot different than a 16 goal Kyle Palmieri. Like that's the kind of guy that the Islanders need, and they just haven't gotten that. And so I get mad when some something goes wrong, they completely shut down, they give up a bunch of goals, and they're not coming back. And I'm like, well, they need 
guys that can pull them back into the game. And then I think to myself, they went out and got those guys and they're not doing that. And I'm, I, you know, you don't want to pick on Matt Martin. I don't want to pick on Kyle Paul Mary. I don't want to pick on Anders Lee or Oliver Walsh or any of the guys we've been picking on this whole time. But like, there's something that happens when these guys don't accomplish or don't live up or produce the way we expect them to produce. And that's how you get situations like this, where one bad goal leads to weeks of losing. Like, it's just, you know, that, that, that game in MetLife stadium might just curse them for the rest of the season because it was probably so traumatic that they just don't want to. And that would, that was the culmination of a bunch of weeks of, of not, you know, closing the door and, and playing well. So I don't know. It's like, we can't, we can't, I mean, listen, we could criticize Lula Amaral about a lot of things, but like to have gone out and gotten Palmieri and Pajot and Horvat at the expense of those first round picks is probably the right idea because had they used picks on those guys, where would those guys be now? Like what, what picks would they have even used? I don't even, who would we even drafted? And I don't think they would have done that, but these guys just aren't, I don't know. They, if I was to trade, if I was to pick two guys right now to trade off this roster, Pajot and Palmieri would be the first two guys off the roster. Like, I just don't think that they're bringing enough for what they're getting paid. I don't think there's not enough, there's not too much time left on the contracts, thankfully. But to me, I just, I don't know, man. I'm, I feel like I, I'm, I'm speaking sort of hypocritically, I guess. But like, they went out and got these guys to score goals and pull them back into these games. And, you know, three years later now, they just aren't doing that. So I don't, I don't know, what, what is their purpose? I don't, I don't get what they're doing there. So am I wrong? Am I, am I being a hypocrite? Am I being crazy? Like, no, I, I think it, you should be, <laughs> you could be frustrated with basically, you know, there's what, 23 players on the roster right yeah. now. And you can probably be frustrated with uh, 16 of them and have a pretty good argument. Right. <laughs> like, and it's, it's, it's a killer. It's because right. like in my mind, I'm like, all right, you know, Palmieri, Nelson, Horvat and Barzell, like you, you have your first two lines right there. You have like mm. the kind of the building blocks of, of a, a good couple top lines. And even that it's just not been enough because mm. whether it's Lee or going through a, someone's, someone is perpetually going through a slump that's bringing <laughs> that stuff down, whether it's right. Lee, I know Paul Mary was called. Right. Um, you said Pajot is not scoring enough. And, and I think that, you know, t- the, the scary thing with Pajot and Paul Mary in my mind is like if the Islanders traded Kyle Palmieri to the Bruins right mm-hmm. after the show, he would be a great fit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I feel the same way about Paggio going to like, if he, if he steps into a team that needs that, that solid third line center, he'd right. be a great fit. Um, but neither one of them would, I don't think get anything of use for the Islanders in return. Cause <laughs> the Islanders are basically getting out of the contract. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I tend to think Palmieri has played pretty well this season and, and, mm-hmm continues to do what he's supposed to do since the coaching change. He's played very well. Yeah, like, yeah we'll that's that true. Here. And, but, and it's like, but like you said, he hasn't been right. The outside of when we've been in the playoffs, like he hasn't been the, the guy that you, you thought he hasn't hit his ceiling yet. I, I right. would say he's just not, sure. which, and he's probably not going to obviously because he's <laughs> you know, 33, but he hasn't hit, he hasn't played at the heights that we've seen from him in previous stops in his career. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just that's that's part of my issue with the people who think that this is going to be a a, a team that, that is going to rebuild. Like you you're gonna how are you going to rebuild when even if you if you were able to shed Palmieri or or Pajot's contract because uh, there's you know Palmieri is a UFA and mm. after next season and Pajot the season after that and maybe you can find a way out of it. Like there's still you're still going to have Matt Barzell, Bo Horvat, Anders Lee. Brock Nelson in all likelihood, Pierre Angval, Casey Sezegas, like that's that's half your forward core already. You're not that's that's a team that can't lose enough for you to to rebuild. So you just no. you like it or not, like you have to keep adding to this team. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just going to be a, a waste of time for next year and the year after that and the year after that because they have guys who are playing at nine million dollar contracts for eight more years and eight and a half million dollar contracts for eight more years. And Sorokin's eight year contract clicks in next year. And it's, right. it's just not how it's going to go. And that's part of why it's so frustrating is that right. this, this team should have been better than it is. Yeah. And, and you can point to the, to the blown leads. You can point to the fact that they're rarely behind in games. You can point to mm. all sorts of things that show you that, but it's also just look at the roster. Like, look at how this team is constructed. It was constructed to be, a good team with a lot of veteran players on their 
third contracts and in their in like the prime of their career and they just weren't able yeah. to do it so they just wasted a year of everybody's <laughs> prime they wasted really good seasons from yeah. barzell and nelson and horvat and dobson and hmm. they just they wasted it all like there's no guarantee that next year matt barzell is going to stay healthy or right. or be as good as he was there's no guarantee that Noah Dobson plays at this level again next year right. there's no guarantee that Alex Romanov continues to progress like he has there's just no none of that is yeah. guaranteed look at the like you said look at the devils right yeah like it's this isn't that's why when these opportunities come you can't blow leads to the Sharks and give away points to the to teams that you're going to end up chasing so yeah it's I, uh yeah you can it's it's a rare season where you can point your finger to whether it's the the front office or the twelfth forward, like there are a lot of people that you can heap a ton of blame on and put us in this situation because it's it's not fun to be here at all. And I'm, no, um, you know, it's like, you know, why? It, the, Mike Francesa used to always say it was a lot easier to do talk radio when the Yankees or the Mets were bad or the Giants and Jets, whoever, mm. like they they were shit. Mm. It's a lot easier to do it because there's more to talk about like it's a lot easier to talk about shit when it's shitty but <laughs> it's not fun like it's not wow. fun to talk about the islanders when they're like because i spend so much of my day thinking about the islanders like yeah it's not fun to think like oh god like the next meaningful game for this team if they lose tomorrow like the next meaningful game for this team won't be for eight months like that's yeah why 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 am i wasting my time thinking about that right well it, it's yeah this is just i mean we talked previously in the Lane Lambert era uh, of how how it's not been fun and how, you know, even the wins are so wrapped up in this sort of weird, poor play that you can't really enjoy it. Meanwhile, I'm watching friends who who have who root for very, very bad teams getting excited because somebody had a good season in the minors or somebody had sort of sick goal, you know, in an AHL game. And it's like, I can't even do that. Like, I just, it's it's. uh it's rough. And, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about you talk about like, you never know. I was thinking the other day about Ryan Pollock and Adam Pellet and how now both of these guys have been hurt. They've each played 33 games this year. They've spent time out of the lineup. Pellick was hurt again recently. Um, and so I don't, I don't want to come down too hard on them, but these two guys at one time were the sort of lifeblood, the backbone of this team. And they were just lights out together on the ice. And now even playing them together is not, a guarantee of anything. And, you know, they, they pull like had a slap shot, I think against the lightning or the, the blues, I forget. And he, uh, he missed the net by about four feet. And, you know, Brendan was like, Oh, he's got that big booming slap shot. And I thought to myself, I'm so tired of hearing about Ryan Pollock's big booming slap shot that scores goals that results in a goal five times a year. Like, I just don't know what else, you know, maybe if we're lucky, he's got three right now, maybe we get two more at the end of the season. So like, what what good has that done? Like, it's, we have we wasted their prime too? I don't know. I don't think so because you know Ryan Pollock made one of the best plays in Islanders history <laughs> in that playoff series against the Lightning. But uh, I don't know. I just it's yeah. there's so much so much to be frustrated about and angry about and to second guess and it's just like the one guy who does get absolved is Wah because he's not he hasn't been here that long. But right, yeah, no, how long is that going to last? Is he thinking like shit? I know, and I and you. To, to kind of add to the just the disappointment is these guys aren't idiots like they know that this team was this is a, right. a situation where the general manager doubled down put all the the eggs in their basket was like i'm yeah. trusting you guys because you're supposed to be this high character uh team that that that's always going to cover the effort spread that's always yeah. going to be pros and not make mistakes and and be tidy enough to uh, at least not shoot yourself in the foot. Like right. they, they blew it. Like they blew that, that opportunity. They blew the um, benefit of the doubt. Like we gave this team so much of the benefit of the doubt right? and they blew it. So it's, it, that's, what's killing me here. It's like, I don't need Anders Lee to tell me like these guys are going through a tough time. Like you're running out, man. You're 33. You're running out. Right. Your career is, is on the downside of the mountain. Brock Nelson's going to be 33 next year. Like this, these you're running out of opportunities to yeah. to win. Like how is that not driving you nuts that you're uh, a player who's 
got three more years left on his contract and who knows mm. if you're going to play beyond that like yeah. and and you're you're watching your team give away one you you're on actively on the team i shouldn't say watching your team we're mm. watching you guys do it you're playing on a team that's actively giving away and wasting one of your last seasons like what yeah. how is that not driving you guys nuts to the point where you're right. you're going like you're not coming out back after a game and saying yeah you know like just <laughs> we got a good point tonight and yeah uh, you know, we really st- I'm, I'm proud of the group sticking with it like no you, you should be like we are m- like matt barzell is after every game lately mm. like i don't know what's going on this is but, unacceptable the well, bruins blew a two <laughs> i hate doing this because uh, we it's stuff we make fun of but the bruins blew a two goal lead against the canucks the other night in the third period uh and i was on uh, I saw Fluto Shinzawa tweeted out his story and the mm. headline for the story was that's it's unacceptable mm. to, and like, that's probably the first time the Bruins have done that all season. Right. The Canucks gave up four goals to the wild, right. And lost seven to four or something like that. Like 10, it was, yeah, 10 seven and yeah, 10, they were, seven, yeah. <laughs> and, and they're like, and that was it, their first three game losing streak of the yeah. season. And, and they're all like, this has got to be stopped. Right. Like, the Islanders are like, yeah, but we got it to overtime. We blew a two goal <laughs> lead for the, after blowing a two goal lead to to the Rangers the other night in front of the national television, everybody's like talking about our rival as if they're like the the coolest right. thing. You guys were you guys were the antagonist in that in a story where you're the underdog. You were found a way to become the antagonist right. and make the 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 favorite, the rich, glitzy capitalist team the favorite, the protagonist in this story. Mm. And it instead of being like yeah unacceptable can't believe we did that i'm embarrassed it was eh. we just got to pick ourselves up and get back to it like yeah enough of that please yeah enough no, of I, it just go win five games in a row and then we can start talking about adversity and yeah. and bad luck well again and, and you know i don't know maybe it's me maybe i'm just like too stuck in 2019 2020 and 2021 because correct me if i'm wrong but it used to be that way <laughs> like it used to be like that's yeah. like, we can't do this anymore we can't we can't play like this anymore and that th- those days are over like you're right i mean they're just they when they came out i mean this is two games the b- between the blues game and the lightning game they came out in both of those games and just didn't really seem it, they were playing as if they had a 20 point cushion in the playoffs right. as opposed to being down by seven points you know the blues right. won maybe it's a little bit more even but that matinee game that is a definition of unacceptable that is a team directly ahead of you a loss here puts you seven points back of them and they just went out and lost <laughs> like just just like it was nothing they just roll yep. out of bed and lost the game without yep. even, without trying i mean, I mean they, they that game they beat the lightning in that 6-2 win right yeah and but, but let's let's talk about since then how many efforts were unacceptable for one reason or another right the, they lost to the flames in, a, in another matinee yeah putrid effort unacceptable absolutely so you think, okay, we're going to have a response. You're supposed to have a response to an effort like that. Come out against the Kraken. Unacceptable. <laughs> like completely unacceptable. And right. that's the game afterwards where, where Lee was like, well, I'm happy we got to overtime mm. in the game. Right. So you expect, okay, they're going to come out. Mm. Good effort. Bunch of days off. Yeah. Stadium series game. Maybe they're thinking about the stadium series. All right, yeah. fine. First game against the Rangers in, in over a yep. year. You know they're going to be have, come out with their tails on fire. They do. Then mm. they blow a lead with two goal lead with four minutes left. Unacceptable. Yep. They beat the Penguins. Mm. Isn't that great? Two points against the Penguins. That's always like they blew a two, two goal lead <laughs> in a third period again after yeah. doing it on national TV against the Rangers after two unacceptable losses. Mm. I'm going to jot that one down as unacceptable. Right. Even in a win. Uh, let, let, how about we'll give them half credit? We'll say it's concerning. Maybe concerning. not unacceptable, okay. but it's okay. concerning. So we're, we're at. Three unacceptable losses right. and a concerning win. Yep. Uh, over their last, over those four games. Okay. Right. I think that's a building block win. Hey, mm. at least you got the two points. You're still alive in the playoff race. Got a couple big ones coming up to keep, you know, to, to pad, uh, to keep clawing and stay with the the Lightning and the the Flyers mm. and the Devils and the Red Wings. And you're playing a beatable St. Louis Blues team that has its own issues. Yeah, you're on the road, but you should win this game. They lose four nothing. Yep, unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. <laughs> Even if you 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 outshot them thirty eight to twenty five or whatever the hell it ended up being, yet gave up three goals in thirty two seconds because you felt bad for yourself. 
in a must-win game. Mm-hmm. Unacceptable. So then you think, all right, quintessential playoff game in a regular season. You're playing the team that you are objectively chasing for the playoffs. The mm-hmm. team that is in front of you, the team that has the playoff spot that you tell us you want desperately. You don't want to go home early. You don't want to send Simon Holmstrom to the world championships in, in May. He doesn't want to go play for Sweden. He wants to play for the <laughs> Islanders. So you got to think, okay, home game, matinee, kids in the building. They're going to come out like hair on fire. They already beat this team once. They should be confident. Right. They're down 3 nothing by the time, by tea time on, on, sun, <laughs> on Saturday afternoon. Unacceptable. So yeah. you're talking – the last six games, we have five five unacceptable efforts and one concerning one. <laughs> That's not like it's not it's not two games. It's not it's not a, no. a, a a game where like oh man we just played the Flames and, and Oilers back to back and it's three uh, weeks worth of game time. Yeah. Three weeks, six games. Right, right. We haven't seen an acceptable effort since February eighth. <laughs> like the and Lightning I'm, game where they won six two felt like it 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 they they act like it was two days ago. Yeah. It was it was February eighth. Yeah, they've won. They've had two, and, and you know what? To their credit, pretty good effort against the Maple Leafs. The game before that. Say, yeah. So, so since the All Star break, we'll we'll extend this to the All Star break. We'll say two good games, five unacceptable efforts, and one concerning win. Yeah, like come on, who, right? And and you're the you're a team that is supposed to just always be able to bounce back. Oh, and by mm. the way, we can we can extend this if you want to, to New Year's Day, and I can we can go about uh, we can uh, you can count. Even yeah. more unacceptable efforts like the one against the, the Blackhawks or the Jets or the Wild or the <laughs> Predators. I was going to and... say, if you go two weeks before the All-Star break, I count, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six unacceptable losses. Well, one was that Vegas loss where they played well. Right. So five unacceptable losses and a win that you got lucky, like the, that overtime win against Dallas. You got lucky. So that's even if so five, so that's 10 unacceptable losses, one concerning win, one, one, you know, unfortunate loss basically. And a lucky win, like, and, and then one quality, you know, two quality wins <laughs> between right. the Leafs and lightning games for early February. It's that's talk about it, an unsustainable. It, it, it sounds funny to break it down like this. Cause it sounds so simple and rudimentary. Right. right. Well, yeah, the unacceptable thing is a very cliche yeah. sports thing, but it's, there's a reason for that. Like, right. It makes sense. It makes right. sense when you look at it. Cause guess what? You can keep going back. You want to go all the way back to Christmas and you can count like six more unacceptable efforts, like the seven, no seven nil loss to the penguins. Oh my and God. And then, Oh God, don't worry guys. You got them four days later. You have an opportunity to get it right. Get them right back. Three, one yep. loss. Yeah. The game that they blew in Colorado where they were up the no show in Vegas. Right. No the, show. In the no show right after that coming home against the Canucks. Yeah. Like we're, it's like, the Islanders have played probably what the uh, twenty four games since Christmas since that, mm. which was by the way that the game before Christmas was a a concerning win against the Hurricanes in which they <laughs> they gave up a goal right. with like two seconds left. Yeah. Um, so they played they played yeah twenty four games since Christmas and I would say that we're we're probably what at like sixteen unacceptable mm. efforts of twenty four. Include and by the you know what's crazy we haven't even mentioned. There was a coaching change in here. Like, right. You're supposed yeah. to respond to that. Nope. The so one team the- that in the NHL that doesn't get the, the dead coach bounce is the Islanders. Yeah. Waste of time. Yeah. I can't put it better than that. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not one unacceptable performance. It's literally two months of unacceptable losses yeah. that we have just accepted because and we have no choice. The only way to make up for it is like, you guys. Uh, we're not asking. It's like not you. You'd think that asking for an eight-game winning streak is too much. Like that's too much to ask out of a team. Hmm. But it, that's what we have to. That's what you're we're required to do. Like you are. You just. You know that dream you ha- like everybody has about how they slept through the entire semester and then they yeah. show up to class and they have to. T- and I'm apologizing for even bringing it up because now a lot of people are going to have this dream and it sucks. Um, but you have that dream and you you show up to class and like oh today's the final. And if you, mm. you know what I'm talking about, like that's what the, the Islanders are, have just done that. They've just slept through the entire semester and now they're getting hit with a final exam and they have to get a hundred on it. Like you right. have to, like, there's yeah. no, I don't care. Like you didn't show up for class guys. You just didn't, <laughs> you didn't show up for class. Yeah. You, yeah. you took, you took off 
the entire semester and now you got to ace the final and yeah. there's no there's gonna be no grading curve here or anything so um thank no, you for true. ruining the season yeah it's, it's true i mean listen if they starting saturday if they win every game in march then we're back in business <laughs> <laughs> but that includes a trip to california uh two two back-to-backs uh you know uh and uh games against the hurricanes rangers the uh, jets devils panthers lightning oh, the, the the florida two-step we've seen many times before so yeah good luck oh and the bruins to start things off so yeah good luck with all that um yeah basically that that's i mean that's a very uh quick summary of how this season's gone it's been extremely frustrating uh but we're here we're glad you're here we hope you're at the Offside Tavern on March 30th. That game may mean absolutely nothing, but we'll have a good time. I promise. <laughs> we're gonna have we're gonna have a lot of fun, and uh, it'll be great to to see a whole bunch of people hopefully and uh, talk about how shitty this season has been. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Sign up at Patreon.com/slash Islanders Anxiety for ad free episodes and bonus content. Follow us on Twitter at Isles Anxiety Pod. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and at Spotify. Our theme song is Morning Haze by Family Dinner. Listen to more of their music on Bandcamp and at Spotify. Read Lighthouse Hockey every single day. We are part of the Fans First Sports Network. Learn more at fansfirstsports.com. Shop VintageIceHockey.com. Try wines from the Pinot Project. Pre-order a Stadium Series bobblehead from Foco.com. Yes, I know. Uh, Mike, where can everybody find you on Twitter? The Big Lebowski with two E's. Follow Mike at The Big Lebowski. Read and listen to his work at Action Network where he gets to follow other better teams and tell you all about them and how you can win some money. Uh, I mean, we've emptied the tank so far here. You, you can't accuse us of uh, right. mailing That's it in. The problem. Like, <laughs> it's not like the fan base has just been through hell. Like they've been right. through hell and, and it's going to end up being for naught unless they yeah. win. You know, they, unless they go 15, five and two, like the Red Wings have <laughs> over their next, their next 22 games. Yeah. Good luck. And they're not going to do that. So like, yeah, this, this team of, of, of has, of a very this team of likable people has turned mm. so unlikable so yeah. quickly and it's so sad uh because they have been you know it's been fantastic to watch them at times uh just not this season at all it's true it's true uh but you know we do our best to uh make this as as much fun as we possibly can uh there are there's a Islanders book club coming out this week on Wednesday if you're for patrons we have a weird Islanders coming out on Friday uh, I totally forgot last week to mention our Chris Osgood episode you should check take a listen to that with our friend Mike Smith and then we have the other side of that coin coming up this Friday oh intrigue uh getting with a player that we get asked about a lot and is a Michael Leboff favorite and our, the guest is one of our favorites too so you know we're out here hopefully you don't think that we're a waste of time even if the Islanders are <laughs> As, as we have established today, wasting all of our time. Uh, but uh, we'll be back next week and uh, we'll see where we're at. And, you know, again, if they win, then they're back in business. But if they lo- if they lose, you think we were mad this time? I don't know what to hear. I don't want to. I don't know what we're going to be like next week after a couple more losses, particularly against the Bruins. I can't watch the Bruins game because I'll be seeing uh, Batman 89 in concert at the uh, New Jersey Performing Arts Center. So uh, I'll be chilling with a symphony orchestra my wife and one of my favorite movies. So I'll just have to wait and see what happens after that. But uh, you know, I don't know to me so far, this, uh, this season has been uh, an enormous bust and I don't know how to feel about it because uh, yep. it has been a huge waste of time. And that is a new, that's a new one for our lexicon. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. And thank you all for listening. And uh, we will talk to you again next week. All right. And until then take care and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.